Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusar Education. Um, today is the fifth lecture in a series of trigonometrical problems presented as uh, part of the course called Math, with Math Plus and Problems uh, on website unizor.com. Uh, on the same website there is a prerequisite course called Math for Teens, uh, which is basically a theory of mathematics as basically on the level of high school, maybe just a little bit more than that. And uh, so the Math for Teens is a theoretical course, Math Plus and Problems is uh, the course where I, pre where I present different problems. Um, problems in algebra, geometry, trigonometry, etc. So this is trigonometric uh, series uh, and, and as I said, lecture number five. Um, also on the same website, unizor.com, you can find physics for teens and uh, relativity for all courses. They're all presented on the website and uh, the site is totally free. There are no advertisement, no strings attached, even login is optional. It's really needed only if you're uh, studying under somebody's super supervision. So we need to establish the connection between the supervisor and the student. Okay, so let's go back to problems. Problem number one. What's given is that there are three uh, acute angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, which are, if you will summarize them together, will give you pi over 2 radians, 90 degrees. My problem is, I would like to evaluate uh, an expression tangent alpha times tangent beta plus tangent beta times tangent gamma plus tangent gamma times tangent alpha. So, my angles are not given. The only thing which is uh, uh, which is, which is uh, given is that their sum is equal to pi over 2. Nevertheless, it's sufficient to evaluate this whole expression to a concrete number. It will be number 1, actually. Okay, so, um, as usually, I suggest you, uh, after I present the problem, you can stop the video, pause it, and think about the problem yourself. The most important part of problem solving is to solve them yourself. Now, uh, if, even if you don't really come up with a solution, just think about the problem, how to approach it. That's very important. And I will present you my solution, which is probably one of few solutions which, are, uh, which, which, which can be uh, presented. Okay, so what should I do? First of all, from this I can uh, derive a very simple thing that alpha plus beta is equal to pi over 2 minus gamma, right? So, um, if I will present tangent gamma as tangent by definition is sine divided by cosine. At the same time, sine of some angle. Um, if we are talking about acute angles, and they are acute angles, remember from the uh, right triangle, if this is angle X and this is angle Y, then the cosine of X is equal to sine of Y, and sine of X is equal to cosine of Y. I hope you remember this. And the explanation is simple because for a right triangle, sine of x is this catheter divided by hypotenuse. And that's exactly the definition of the cosine of y, and vice versa. So, and also x plus y is equal to pi over 2. So x is equal to pi over 2 minus y. Now, using this very simple property, I can say that sine of gamma is equal to cosine of um, 
pi over 2 minus gamma. And a cosine of gamma is equal to sine of pi over 2 minus gamma, which is equal to pi over 2 minus gamma we can express as alpha plus beta. So this is cosine of alpha plus beta divided by sine of alpha plus beta. Okay, so using this I can substitute it here and my expression which contains three angles using this condition will have only two, uh, two variables, alpha and beta. Okay, now before doing that I actually open up what is the cosine and sine of sum of angles. This is the cosine alpha times cosine beta. That's one of the few formulas which I actually, actually remember. Everything else can be, well probably everything else can be derived from them. So I remember what the cosine of sum of angles and sine of uh, two angles is. Uh, obviously it's uh, presented and proven in the theoretical course Math 14 so on the same website as a prerequisite. So it's cosine, cosine minus sine, sine divided by sine e is sine cosine plus cosine sine. I will simplify it even more. I will divide both numerator and denominator by product of cosines. So if I will divide it, I will have 1. Now sine times sine divided by cosine cosine will be tangent times, times tangent, right? So it will be tangent alpha times tangent beta. Here, sine cosine divided by cosine sine, it will be just tangent of alpha. And this, if I divide this, it will be sine over sine of beta plus, which is tangent beta. And this is my final, fi final formula. So tangent of gamma can be presented as this expression. All I have to do is substitute it into my original expression, which I need. And what will I have? Tangent alpha times tangent beta plus now, tangent gamma and tangent gamma I will just uh, factor out, so it will be tangent gamma times tangent alpha plus tangent beta. Tangent gamma times tangent alpha and tangent gamma times tangent beta, that's why. And now I will substitute instead of tangent uh, gamma this expression. So what will be my tangent plus tangent will cancel with this one and remaining will be 1 minus tangent times tangent and this is tangent times tangent so it will be 1 very simple so that's the answer okay next Okay, I have again two acute angles. Acute means they are in the first quadrant from 0 to pi over 2. And I know that sine square of x is equal to 1 fifth and sine of square of y is equal to 1 tenth. What I have to do, I have to evaluate x plus y. Well, I mean, in theory, you can say that, okay, sine of x is equal to square root of 1 over 5, which means x is equal to arc sine of square root of 1 over 5. Well, that's an answer. So you can say, you, you can say that this is uh, arc sine of 1 over square root of 5 plus y, which is similarly arc sine of uh, 
this. Yes, you can do that. But that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking about something much more simpler than this. So apparently this plus this gives you a much simpler answer if you will be able to come up with this answer. So again, I suggest you to pause the video and think about this uh, problem and uh, I will present my solution. So that's not the way how it's supposed to be done, obviously. What we will do is diff di di different. Look, cosine square of x is equal to what? I mean, it's cosine square plus sine square is always 1 for any angle, right? So this is 4 fifths. And cosine square of y is equal to 9 tenths. So from this, we have sine x is equal to 1 over square root of 5. Cosine x is equal to 2 over square root of 5, right? Square root of 4 is 2. Now, sine of y is equal to 1 over square root of 10, and cosine of y is equal to 3 over square root of 10. Square root of 9 is 3. So, we have sine and cosine, and now we can do something like sine of x plus y, which is equal to what? sine x times cosine y plus cosine x times sine y. And since I know the values of all these, I can substitute it and I will get a nice expression for sine of x plus y. And then I will get arc sine of it, right? Okay, so sine x times cosine of y. Sine x times cosine of y. That's 3 over square root of 5 square root of 10 plus cosine of x which is this times sine so it's 2 divided by again square root of 5 square root of 10 equals 2 well it's the same denominator so I can just add numerator so it's 5 over square root of 5 square root of 10 now 5 over square root of 5 is square root of 5 and this is square root of 2 times square root of 5, right? 10. Which is what? 1 over square root of 2. Now, 1 over square root of 2 or square root of 2 over 2, this is a sign of what? I mean, that's something which, again, I do remember. It's actually of 45 degrees. So if you have a triangle, right triangle with the same catalyst, which is 45 degrees, 45 degrees. If this is 1, this is 1, this is square root of 2, right? This is the theorem. So 1 over square root of 2 would be sine or cosine of uh, 45 degrees of pi over 4. So the answer is pi over 4 radians, or 45 degrees. Okay, that's the second problem. And the third and the last one of this lecture will be Okay. <coughs> I have to simplify the expression cosine of arc sine of x. I have to simplify it somehow. Well, what do we know about arc sine? Arc sine, by definition, is such an angle, let's say alpha, is equal to arc sine of x, such an angle sine of which is equal to x. That's the definition of arc sine. Now, if I will define it just like that, there are many different angles sine of which is equal to x because sine is a periodic function and the period is 2 pi so if i find one particular angle then this angle plus 2 pi will also be angle sine of which would be equal to equal to the same x so for this purpose if you remember i'll just repeat a little bit some theoretical stuff 
arc sine is not function which is defined like everywhere. Arc sine is a function which is defined only uh, on with a domain. Well, domain is obvious. It's from minus one to one to one because sine is always um, uh, x cannot be greater than one or less than minus one because because that that's the that, that's the sign of it. Now the angle alpha, I mean, sorry, that's a codomain. It's codomain. That's where uh, one second. No, that's the main. That's correct. Now the value, which is angles themselves. Angles are from minus pi over two to pi over two. Why? Because if you will take a look at the uh, graph of sine, the only period, the only uh, in interval where the function is outside of the periodicity is this one. From minus pi over 2, this is 0, to pi over 2. So only this period, only this interval function does not have a period. It's monotonically increasing, and since it's monotonically, then for every value, this is 1 and this is minus 1. From every value of x, from minus 1 to 1, we can find value, the corresponding value of this is x, this is alpha. Okay? So alpha is in this particular range, and uh, and x is in this particular range. So the function is defined on the domain from minus 1 to minus 2 to plus 1 with the codomain with values of this function between um, uh, minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now this is the graph of sine of x. <coughs> sine of alpha, sorry, sine of alpha x is equal to sine of alpha. The graph of this function would be, uh, well, this is the bisector, so it will be correspondingly from uh, minus 1 to 1, but the function would be like this. So this is pi over 2, and this is minus pi over 2. So this is arc sine of x. So again, this is sine of alpha. x is equal to sine of alpha, and this is alpha equals to arc, arc sine of x. So these two graphs are symmetrical relatively to bisector. So all these issues have been covered in the theoretical course, which is prerequisite for this one on the same website, it's called Mass for Teens. So I suggest you to repeat it if you don't remember, I just some put some, some refresher. Because the problem is actually simple if you will kind of understand all these issues. All right, so I know that by definition, sine of arc sine is equal to um, x. Now, what, but we are interested in the cosine. Now, with the cosine of alpha, alpha is arc sine, I just substituted, is equal to square root of one minus sine square of, of alpha, right? Because cosine square plus sine square are equal to one. Now, in theory, there are two different signs, plus or minus, but I have said in the very beginning that we have um, uh, uh, cer certain restrictions on, on domain and codomain, etc. And let's just think about this particular issue. My x is supposed to be from uh, minus 1 to 1, and my angle is supposed to be from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now, if the angle, this alpha, is between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2, let's think about the cosine. Now, I'll put it in the same graph. The cosine actually has 
maximum at zero and then it goes this way. That's the cosine. So from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 it's always positive. Which means I can always uh, uh, I can always put only the plus sign. And uh, that actually solves the whole problem because sine of alpha we know what it is, it's x. So the whole thing is square root of 1 minus x squared. So I can say that cosine of arc sine of x is equal to square root of 1 minus x squared always for any x which belongs to a domain from minus 1 to plus 1. And again, why is it only plus? Because the arc sine for this particular x by definition is an angle from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 and cosine is positive in this particular area. Okay, that concludes my third and the last problem. So what I suggest you to do is open the website unizor.com, go to a course called Math Plus and Problems, among all the courses. Um, now if you will click on this course, you will see the trigonometry as one of the options. You go there and the trigonometry 05 is this lecture. All the problems are presented on the textual part of this particular um, uh, page and uh, you will be able just to basically again get into these problems and try to solve them yourself. Uh, I Sometimes I put some hints, maybe sometimes solutions in writing, uh, but the conditions of the problem mold is there obviously. Solutions are not always there. So read the solutions uh, so re read the problem itself and try to come up with your own solution. Maybe it will be the same as presented here, maybe it will be something different, because any problem can be probably solved in, in more than one way. And just spend some time. What's important is to spend some time thinking about the problem. If you think about the problem, how to approach it, etc., that's the best way how you prepare yourself to real-life problems. In real life problems you will not see something like this, but if your mind is trained to seek the solution using whatever different ways you can, that's the way how you prepare yourself. And the more mass problems you can solve, the better you will be prepared to real life problems. Okay, on this note let me say thank you and good luck. <laughs>